Over the course of a five-year period, three Nile crocodiles were found in Florida, and the first one ever spotted living in wild conditions was reported in the 1990s. Now, new claims have come out stating that Nile crocodiles have taken over the Everglades, are killing our native species, and displaced the Native American crocodile. However, just how true are these statements? A video released by the Explorer channel claimed that a mysterious die-off of the American crocodile occurred. The reasons these crocodiles died was unknown, but appeared to be of unnatural reasons. Coincidentally, a Nile crocodile was found in Florida the same year. Researchers then realized the American crocodiles were actually being killed by an established breeding population of Nile crocodiles. The invasive species, thought to be released or escaped from a captive facility, fell under the radar of officials based on the fact that Niles looked like our American crocs. This then led to the Nile crocodiles becoming an established part of Florida, and there are now concerns of the species moving further up north in the state. Now, the video begins pretty factually, stating there are two species of native crocodilians in Florida, the American alligator and the American crocodile, with the American crocodile being a shyer threatened species. However, it's after this that the video starts going towards a certain direction. Veteran airboat captains, people who knew every gator and croc in their territory, started reporting strange things. They noticed that the strongest American crocodiles, which were the ones that had held the best nesting spots for a decade, were gone. Something was causing these animals to leave their territories, and it was something big. There were rumored strange sightings in the swamps. These were remains of crocodiles and alligators, and not just any kind, remains of the rulers of the Florida Everglades. It was as if something was clearing the area with extreme, unnecessary violence. So first off, a mass die-off of American crocodiles did occur in 2009, with approximately 150 crocodiles found to be dead. However, it was not due to nefarious reasons or now crocodiles. What happened was there was a record-breaking cold snap that occurred in Florida, and several species, including crocodiles, manatee, and fish, died because of it. American crocodiles are a more tropical species compared to our American alligators. They inherently need warmer temperatures. Therefore, if it does become extremely cold, it's likely for American crocodiles not to be able to survive the conditions. Now let's play devil's advocate and say that this was some strange government cover-up, that a cold snap didn't kill the crocodiles. Does the rest of the video make sense? Adding to the confusion were increasingly aggressive encounters with people. We already established that the Native American crocodile is a shy creature. Yet, fishermen reported crocs were suddenly snapping at fishermen or chasing small boats. As far as I'm aware, there have been no reports of crocodiles chasing after boats in Florida. While there have been similar reports of alligators doing this, especially with canoes, it does not appear that any crocodiles have done this in the state. Everyone suspected the Burmese python of being the culprit behind it. Naturally, pythons are known for wiping out local mammal populations, eating everything from raccoons to deer. So it made perfect sense to assume these gigantic constrictors had finally grown big and ambitious enough to start targeting the crocodile population. However, the forensic evidence refused to corroborate with this theory. Biologists, after thorough examination, quickly realized what they had seen wasn't the work of a python. So this is more of just an interesting side note. I am unaware of Burmese pythons eating sub-adult or mature American crocodiles in Florida, but there does seem to be a photo online of an American crocodile eating a Burmese python. If it wasn't the snakes squeezing the life out of the Everglades, what was it? The answer surfaced near Miami. The turning point came when the University of Florida's herpetology team captured a young crocodile they found near a densely populated urban area. When the team got a good look at the animal, they felt an immediate sense of worry. What was more concerning was its personality. For a young animal, it was wildly aggressive and displayed a predatory boldness never seen even in fully grown native crocodiles. So a Nile crocodile was found on April 14th of 2009 at someone's house porch. The interesting thing to note about this was that this crocodile was a hatchling. This crocodile was caught and ended up at a facility in Louisiana. Now the aggressive characteristic noted here is actually what was described about another Nile crocodile caught in 2011, about a quarter of a mile away from the 2009 individual. 
This crocodile, about four feet long, was said to be more snappish and aggressive as it didn't swim away when people approached it. The team of scientists were baffled and wondered if they had gotten their hands on some kind of mutant species or a hybrid crocodile that had crossbred with an alligator. So I have no idea where the mutant claim comes from, but I can tell you that no respected scientist or researcher is going to be thinking the animal could be a crocodile-alligator hybrid as one of their first theories. Crocodiles and alligators diverged about 90 million years ago, meaning they are so different they cannot possibly produce offspring with each other. Unless one was made through experimental means, there was no way this was going to be a crocodile hybrid. Researchers observed something terrifying about these species. These mystery crocodiles were growing an estimated 28% faster and were far more aggressive and bigger than native crocodiles of the same age. It is true that one of the crocodiles that was caught in the individual caught in the Everglades in 2014 was noted to grow about 28% faster than some Nile crocodiles in part of their native range. However, this was only one individual and there was only a 2 mm difference between this Nile crocodile and the American crocodiles in Turkey Point when it came to growth rates. The long-awaited results finally came, and what they saw would prove a situation far worse than they expected. It was a perfect match for Crocodilus niloticus. The strange, aggressive crocodile they had found in a Miami canal was, without a doubt, a Nile crocodile. But the question on everyone's mind is, how did an animal from Africa, an apex predator of this magnitude, suddenly appear and begin breeding in the heart of the Florida Everglades? Yes, genetic work was done on the Nile crocodiles caught in Florida, with a paper discussing this released in 2016. As for a breeding population, the evidence for that is more muddied, but I'll explain that in a bit. The Nile croc holds a notorious reputation as an indiscriminate man-eater. Across its native Africa, it is responsible for an estimated 50 to 200 human deaths every year. It is confirmed that from 2020 to 2024 that there were over 600 attacks made by Nile crocodiles in Africa. The species is no joke and if there was an established breeding population of Nile crocodiles, it would be an issue of immediate concern. After a series of tests, the captured Nile crocodiles were found to be genetically identical. This was proof that they weren't random. In fact, they all likely originated from a small group of hatchlings that either escaped from a poorly secured private facility or, more probably, were intentionally released by an owner who could no longer handle them. Genetically speaking, it was confirmed that two of the Nile crocodiles that were caught were similar and seemed to have come from South African descent. As for how the crocodiles escaped, I recently found a Facebook post from Mike Rockford, who was actually one of the individuals that caught the 2014 crocodile. His post does a great overview of the events that occurred with the Florida Niles, but he starts off with how these crocodiles actually got out there. Early 2009, a nest of Nile crocodiles hatches in an enclosure at the home of a crocodile breeder in Miami-Dade County, Florida. The hatchlings escape through a chain-link fence designed to contain adult crocodiles, but not hatchlings. The breeder claims to recapture all escapees. The recapture was obviously not 100% successful. A single reptile, released years ago, had successfully established a breeding population, meaning these crocodiles were not new to the Everglades swamp. They had been living in the swamps for a long time, hiding in plain sight, successfully camouflaging among the Native American crocodiles due to their similar, yet subtly different, appearance. So in total, if we look at the entire history of every Nile crocodile report in Florida, one was living within a fenced-in private property in natural conditions during the 1990s and 2000s until it was caught, a hatchling was found in 2009, a juvenile was caught in 2011, and another young individual was caught in 2014. In summary, three crocodiles were actually caught in the wild of Florida, plus one that was stuck on private property. Therefore, of the three actually wild-caught individuals, all of them were too young to breed. Now I know some of you are thinking, well if there are young ones, that means they must have come from parents living in Florida, which is a reasonable thought. However, the fact is we have not found any evidence of mature Nile crocodiles living in Florida. In fact, we have not seen any Nile crocodiles in Florida since 2014. 
Now I'm not saying that there can't be some stragglers still out there, but if there was a breeding population, you would have seen another one by now. The spectacled caiman, for example, has an actual established population in Florida, and there have been consistent reports of these guys since the mid 20th century. The fear wasn't that they showed up, it was where they could go next. The Everglades offer everything they need to multiply, and these crocodiles can handle cold weather with ease. This means the threat was growing, and it was moving north. The cold tolerance factor means the Nile crocodiles can potentially expand their range far north, well out of the protected southernmost tip of Florida. Now this is where officials began to get worried. With these factors on the table, the scale of the invasion was unknown, and the potential for catastrophic human and wildlife conflict was imminent in public areas. So it is true that Nile crocodiles are a more cold-tolerant species of crocodilian, and given the fact three individuals were found to have survived in Florida under natural conditions and for lengthy periods of time, it's evident they could expand their range from the Everglades. If they did expand their range, given the fact they could attack people and even livestock, this would inevitably cause major problems. But the key word I'm using is if, because like I said, there is no evidence of a breeding population. The Native American crocodile was already fighting a losing war long before its African cousin showed up. To make everything worse, we let the Nile crocodile give the final blow. We are looking at a future where the state has to rewrite its safety protocols entirely to deal with a threat that looks at us as food. To finish off where we started, there is no evidence that the American crocodile's population decreased because of Nile crocodiles. In addition to that, the American crocs in Florida rebounded after the 2009 cold snap and have maintained a population of around 2 to 3,000. What I will say about this video as a whole is that while there are nuggets of correct information in there, the video twists facts and outright misinforms at certain points. The video is using scare tactics to exaggerate an issue that has been irrelevant in all honesty for about 10 years now. If you would like to learn the entire story of Nile crocodiles in Florida more in depth, you can watch this video I made on the subject. So many of you know about the current study I am working on about 20 foot plus crocodilians. Heck, the topic is pretty much the main thing I'm known for on here, but I need your help. I am finding some really interesting information pertaining to certain head measurements for at least a saltwater crocodile. However, I am currently working with a small sample size. What I am looking for are detailed measurements from skulls or heads of saltwater crocodiles that came from animals at least 10 feet or 3 meters long. I will have my email and Instagram in the description, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thank you all for watching. To learn more about the animals you just saw, buy the second edition of What We Get Wrong About Crocodilians. It examines claims of giant crocodiles, a World War II massacre, regenerating tails, alligators in the sewers, their record land speeds, and more. The book examines claims many, including experts, get wrong about these animals, and the second edition includes updated information, pictures, and more. Buy What We Get Wrong About Crocodilians, the second edition, in physical or digital formats. Link in bio, comments, or description to buy.